The views and opinions expressed on Unlock Your Wealth Radio are those of the host, guests, and callers only and are not necessarily the views of Unlock Your Wealth Radio, Heather Wagonalls, or Success Publishing International. Worried about retirement? Want to travel the world or just be around to watch your kids grow up but you can't because you're drowning in debt? Now you can! With Heather Wagonhalls and the Keys to Riches powered by Unlock Your Wealth Radio. Heather will show you how to stop chasing your wallet, eliminate debt, lose financial stress, and live the life of your dreams. If you truly ever wanted to have more, do more, be a give back more, now's your chance. Listen weekly to hear what others are doing to manage their money better with these proven strategies for building wealth with the Keys to Riches Financial Philosophy. Now, here's your host, Heather Wagonhalls. Hold on. Welcome, everyone. This segment of Keys to Riches Radio is sponsored by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at keystoriches.com forward slash free book and click on the link to over 150,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Welcome to the show, everyone. I am your purveyor of prosperity, Heather Wagonhalls, and I am flanked by the maestro of moolah, Michael Terry. Hey, folks. And here at Keys to Riches, powered by Unlock Your Wealth Radio, we are going to help you get your money mind right with our Keys to Riches financial philosophy. And we have a lot in store for today because it's our final key for the season. Number 13. I know. And and our fledgling show is uh, just crushing it. So it's I'm so excited about this. So yet again, we've wrapped yet another season of Keys to Riches Radio. And it's doing so well, thanks to all of you who tune in each and every week to learn how to get your money mind right, so your wealth and happiness will follow. Uh, Anyway, so uh, we have Moolah Word of the Day, which is a pretty good one. It's a basic one, but we really don't think in terms of what that actually means. So that's your little hint to stay tuned for the Moolah Word of the Day. And we are on our final key in our Keys to Ridges financial philosophy, which is... Become a voracious reader. Yay! I am so impressed with your mastery. Which I need to work on. (laughs) Much rather watch a film. Yes. Well, but you know, audiobooks. Yeah. You know, it's the new, you know, reading. Oh, it's cool. It's the new reading with the ears. We were looking, I was showing Fred, we were talking about um, reading or whatever, and he was he was telling me how he was talking to somebody about how much, how, how often I read and how many books I read and, and uh, telling this person, oh, she reads a lot of books, so she would know if that's a good one. And for, I don't know why, shits and giggles, I just happened to open up my Audible and, you know, because I've been upset because there's only so many badges that you can earn and, and, and I'm such a power reader that I've earned almost all of them at least once. Yeah. And but but I like to get up to the platinum level, like where you're way up there. And there's it's called the stack badge and it's the library badge. And I got like one um, and I can't remember what the incremental level is. Yeah. Is this per year, per week, per month? This is the so the stack badge has to do with how many total books are in your library. In, in your library. Okay. Yes. So I am a master listener, so I don't know how many hours that is. Um, and you can see that I got like the silver ring around my stack badge. Okay. And so let's see what that means. So I've got at least 200 books in my library. So I like to do two or three a week. You know, that's kind of, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know um, why that's my particular number, but I remember years ago when uh, my friend worked for a bunch of different public speakers and I, and I got to meet Jim Rohn. We were talking and we talked about the uh, um, how effective that reading was over just having a college degree because, you know, I, I didn't get one. I had to drop out to take care of my mother. One of the things right, that right, he right. had shared with me, but he said, you know, the average person in their field has read less than three books on their particular job title. And the average expert in any given field has only read three to five. Wow. And so, you know, his thing is, imagine what kind of a person you could be in any field if you read more than that. Well, he goes, what if you just read, you know, like a book a week? Yeah. You know, think about where you would be in 10 years. And and I'm just like, oh, my gosh, I'm thinking, how smart could I be? You know, and, and at right. this time. Right. 
I was a stockbroker and I was working in investments and stuff. And so I, I started reading all kinds of stuff and, and I stayed away from people. If it sounded like something I already read, I wanted another point of view and another point of view. I wanted yeah. to get yeah. the as big a picture as I could. And and it was amazing how powerful that statement was because it's at, at one point I, I, I got to chit chatting, you know, you, you spend time with the people that you work with and mm-hmm. industry people and you think, wow, you're an expert and you have a college degree and I'm sitting here listening to you espouse your wisdom. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, me without my college degree, but my commitment to read a book a week in my chosen profession put me miles ahead of these yeah, people. Yeah. And I was just blown away by that. And then, and that kind of gave me some confidence about not having a college degree because I was always freaked out about that. And I think that that's where my two to three books a week came in. Yeah. When I was real young, you know, is this, you know, in my twenties, I said, you know what, if I read two or three books a week, if one a week in 10 years makes you like the supreme being, imagine what would happen if you read two or three. And then, you know, then I just started reading other stuff I liked and other things that I wanted to become that I was interested in or adopting, you know, and I figured, so I'll read three books of differing opinions on any particular subject to decide whether or not it's a hobby or something I want to pursue. But I'll get three, it's like talking to three different people, getting three different opinions. Sure. But in like long form, like a book. So. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think the, you know, the necessity to go to college is, you know, gonna it's going to phase out a little bit. Well, I mean, I just think of Mike Rowe and the Dirty Jobs yeah, guy. Yeah, he's great. He's you know, great. but, uh, you know, he highlighted so many jobs that were six-figure jobs that you didn't need a college degree for. Yeah. And you just had to be willing to get your hands a little dirty. Yeah. You know, because if money is money, right? Sure. You know, I mean, it all spends the same. Who cares how you get it as long as it's like legal and ethical, you know? Um, You know, barring that, you know, does it really matter how you feel your bank account? I mean, look at all these guys. Like, and and I'm fascinated by these shows because I had auto shop. Uh, But look at all of these cool car shows that they have where they take these old hunks of junk and then they restore them to make street rods or these just really Uh, killer. Home improvement shows. Yeah. Dear Lord. And you know those people are banging out way more than six figures doing something cool. Yeah. It's a little dirty, but it's cool. Yep. You know, so yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, we are in an, a technological and information age, but with everybody thinking that that's the only way, it just has widened yeah. the possibility for people that want to pursue traditional routes because, you know, we still need people to fix our cars. We still need our houses built. There's still yeah. so much yeah. that can be done. And, um, with the apathy of society, there's a value placed on skill and ability and experience. Yeah. And and you can't get that from a book. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm sorry, I, from a degree. Unfortunately, not in the music business. Yes. Experience means absolutely nothing. Well, but your industry has changed. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But uh, I value your experience well, and expertise. Yeah, and there are a few that do. Yes. Yes, for sure. Um, because those who don't know history are doomed to repeat it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> as they say. But uh, let's get going anyway, shall we, with our moolah words so we can hop into this week's key. Because there are some specific things that you need to know, because I have had so many friends that actually graduated from college, and they would they all said, if I never see another book in my lifetime, it'll be too soon. <laughs> <clears throat> That's not a good attitude. It's not a good attitude because, you know, that was 20 years ago. Yeah. And so if you just compare compare career tracks, you know, you'll see that that was a bad move for them. But yeah. we'll talk about that in this week's key. But first, let's do our moolah word of the day, shall Sounds we? Good. Sounds good. And our moolah word, if I teased you well enough to stay tuned for this part of the show, is an individual... Called an investor. That is our moolah word, investor. Investor. So we hear that term bantied about, and you may already be an investor and you didn't even really know it. So an individual who commits money to an investment product with the expectation of financial return. Generally, the primary concern of an investor is to minimize risk while maximizing return as opposed to a speculator who is willing to accept a higher level of risk in the hopes of collecting higher than average profits. Mm -hmm. And like we were just talking off air before we got started, you know, so I, I come up with ideas 
And, you know, and I come up with ideas all the time, but it doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to act on them. But I do speculative investment in the virtual realm and I speculate on virtual real estate. So if I come up with a domain idea and, you know, I don't necessarily want to spend the time or the money to outfit it, but it's like real estate. You know, you look at the land that's way far out and it's dirt cheap. It's, you know, a few bucks an acre. But, you know, eventually urban sprawl is going to get there. And you buy that on a speculation that someday in the future it'll be worth money <clears throat> and it'll be a cheap price now. And so someday in the future, it'll be worth a lot and you'll hit pay dirt. But not always. Like what happens if the the uh, development doesn't move out in that direction? Or like what happened here in Arizona, people speculated it, the development did move out and then the market crashed yeah. and then it became ghost towns all over again. Well, think about the guys that bought, you know, greengiant.com before Green Giant had the sense to do it. Yeah. Or well, even Kelsey Grammer yeah. lost his own name. Wow. You know, he went to Kelsey Live or something like that. Yeah, but Kelsey yeah. Grammer, you know, famous actor, yeah. uh, he he didn't cyber squat his name fast enough and somebody else did and wanted to sell it back to him. And he said, I'm not going to go there. Yeah. So, him. so yeah. you know, so he said, I'm not going to go there. So that's that's what I'm saying. It's speculative. If somebody mm -hmm. doesn't want it bad enough. Then, you, then you're out of luck. Then you're out of luck. But if you, you know. Green Giant, I'm sure, wanted it bad enough. <laughs> <laughs> ho, ho, ho. And Kellogg's and General Mills. Yeah, know. exactly. You know, I mean, so just think about it. Yeah. You know, so, but, you know, you come up with ideas and then, you know. Yeah. So I cyber squat, you know, I guess that, that that's not a flattering term, but I do speculative virtual investment. That yeah. sounds better. Cyber, yeah, <clears throat> cyber squats. Probably. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you know, because pe people call it squatting, you know, but I actually, I've paid for the domain, so I technically own it. Yeah. You know, so if somebody wants it, I sure. mean, and squatting in real estate is actually like kind of stealing the land. You own it through occupation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's why you got to go out and visit your properties. <laughs> I have some land, some vacant land I got to go visit. I haven't visited it yet. You got like six months to rescind a transaction. And if, if, if you haven't visited it yet and I need to get out there, I'm on that borderline. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm on that borderline on some of my spec land stuff. But, you know, I'm prepping for the zombie apocalypse, too. So <laughs> so I think that that land will always be good. I just need to make sure nobody's squatting my land. Yeah. You know, I got to go out there and check it out, make sure nobody else is there, because I got to kick them out if yeah. they have been. Um, so... Uh, so I can retain my right of ownership. But anyway, so investor is today's moolah word of the day. But let's get to this week's key, shall we? It's our final key as we're wrapping up the season. But first, this segment of Keys to Riches powered by Unlock Your Wealth Radio is sponsored in part by KeepMyID.org, the only service that actually prevents identity theft. All others are just monitoring services. Put your credit on lockdown with their special offer for Keys to Riches radio listeners by visiting our website at keystoriches.com forward slash KeepMyID and click on the link to start protecting your financial future and identity right now. Remember Remember to use promo code WAGS. Now let's get started with this week's key. It's our final key in our keys to riches. So think about how far we've come. But first, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, we are so glad to have you. Welcome to the Keys to Riches powered by Unlock Your Wealth Radio. And the Keys to Riches is a financial philosophy that teaches you how to think like the rich and be in control of your own money. It also gives you specific techniques to create or fix your credit, eliminate debt, save and invest, all while transforming your current financial habits into healthy money management skills. And we do this one key at a time, one week at a time here at Keys to Riches Radio. And we are on our final key, become a voracious reader. So quickly, let's just, let's just take a moment. So if you are uh, driving, don't do this because your hands need to be appropriately on the wheel or the gear shift <laughs> or both, depending on whether you have a manual or an automatic transmission. But if you are free to do this, if you can put your arms up safely, Wrap one arm around you and give yourself a big hug. And with the other hand, pat yourself on the back. Because if you've been with us since the beginning of the season, you have made some incredible milestones in your financial future by simply practicing each key in its entirety each and every week. So you should be giving yourself a big hug, a warm round of applause, a good pat on the back, a good doggy, whatever it might be. As we got M Michael demonstrating here in the studio, our maestro of moolah. And... Uh, uh, so it's huge. Think about where you came from. So whether you, like we say in our motto, whether you're starting out or starting over, in any case, you had to 
make some generalized acceptances about yourself. Maybe you are not where you want to be financially. Maybe you've made some mistakes, but in any case, you said enough is enough and you accepted where you are in order to get where you want to go. And we just started that simply by our acceptance and affirmation key. And then we started trying to convince ourselves using the powers of affirmation and properly constructing those in such a way that we can actually be more effective in, in our lives by reprogramming our brains after we've had all this sludge of hearing all these years that we're not good enough, smart enough, fast enough, thin enough, whatever enough, <laughs> that we can start reprogramming it just like they had all of that drip marketing effect convincing us that we are the way we are, we're going to use that same technique of dripping the positive stuff on us to get us where we want to go Mm -hmm. and in the right mindset. Then we went from acceptance and affirmation to taking that thousand mile journey that begins with the first step by taking action and making assessment. And we started by learning how to um, analyze ourselves because we're not looking for the how much we're spending when it comes to ineffective money management, because ineffective money management is more about the when, because we're a biology-based money management program. We already know to spend less and save more, but we don't. And so we have to look for something behind that. And that's what we started in the second key. In our third key, this is where the fun begins because this is where everything is possible. And we do our dreams with deadlines key. And this is using our specific Unlock Your Wealth Foundation goal achievement strategy to get there. And then we started our financial education process, or I should say we've already started our financial education process. This is where we continue with our knowledge is power, not knowing is powerful key. And we learn the actual financial strategy we use here, which is our three, five financial strategy. And we learn the three questions and five areas of concern that we need to be addressing with ourselves. And from there... Then we move to our fifth key and we start attacking our biological challenges by understanding how we operate. And that's our take emotion out of the picture key. And from there, we went to our sixth key, hope for the best plan for the worst, because again, we have more mind hurdles we have to overcome when it comes to establishing healthy money management skills. And so we learn about the power of plan B and how to create our own financial fire escape plan. Then, after enough of our assessment envelope filling from our key two, we are now ready to start answering some of those questions in our three questions and five areas of concern. And we are now going to break our budget because budgeting is bad. And we want to opt for a healthy savings and spending plan instead. And we learn how to do that in this key. And then, after this key, we're still fragile. And so we go back to more biology and brain information in our eighth key which is no seasonal exceptions. And we learn how to put some strategies in place that keep us on track. Then we learn how to start catapulting ourselves to the next level by creating our credit and learning about what goes into a credit profile and how to optimize it for investment. Then we learn how to remember real estate and what real estate investment really is, not what people think it is, because home ownership is not real estate investment. And then we learn how to measure how close to or far away from we are to making that first real estate investment. From there, we then learn a very powerful key. This goes back to more of our biology and addressing that in Forget the Perfection Principle. And then we learn how to practice the three R's, which is the secret sauce in our goal achievement strategy, because this is where budgeting and dieting fails, something that you go on to and off of. And we learn how to forgive ourselves to move forward. And then we practice our three R's by review, revise, and recommit. And so by combining this 11th and 12th key, this is what really catapults us stratospherically to um, being able to achieve all of the things that we truly desire and be able to plan for our future while still enjoying today. And that's what review, revise, and recommit allows us to do. And that brings us to this key, which is our become a voracious reader key. And now that we're here, now this gives us the power to take the foundation that we've established for us in our biologically based money management program and really Take it to the next level. This key is so critical because reading is so powerful. Um, As I spoke in the beginning about Jim Rohn and what he said to me um, and about being able to become an expert so quickly just through reading, um, 
the brain, by reading it does several things for us. And so if you're like me, if you didn't get to go to college or you had to drop out of college, you were probably paranoid or at least somewhat concerned that other people had some sort of edge over you. And the only real edge, I mean, other than the historical data that they get, as long as they're not killing brain cells while they're learning it, is, is that they, they're able to complete a commitment, a four-year commitment or whatever it is beyond that. But other than that, you know, you still you still have to learn about what it is that you do each and every day in your profession. You know, you still have to continually advance your knowledge because the tools that we use to do what we do change every day. When I first started in mortgages, credit scoring wasn't even out there, really. So you had to underwrite in a different fashion. Wow. Uh, the tools are different these days. The way credit scoring works, the credit scoring was something that was only really used in the determination of mortgages and credit. And now it's in every part of our lives. We use credit scoring to determine risk on insurance. We use credit scoring to determine fraud, you know, now when it comes to, because people with lower credit scores are statistically the ones that commit more financial fraud mm -hmm. when it comes to insurance fraud. So, that, mm -hmm. and that's why you'll, you'll have higher insurance rates. So things change over time. So we have to continually update our knowledge and update our capacities. You know, the way we invest today, especially after some of the market crashes, it, are completely different than the way they used to be. There's all kinds of new legislation. If you went to work 20 years ago with what you learned 20 years ago and haven't increased your knowledge, you probably don't work in that profession anymore. Yeah. Or you got downsized or right-sized or yeah. outsized. And, and somebody else, bigger, better, faster, stronger got past you. Yeah. So, um, so it's critical that we're always constantly enhancing our knowledge. And like I said, this is the foundation. You, these are fundamental skills that we learn to manage our money effectively. But I haven't told you outside of real estate what specifically you need to be investing in. That's for you to decide. Now that you know how to analyze how you look at money, analyze how you manage your money, create strategies for successful money management, you still have to go out and obtain the knowledge on specifically what to invest in. What are you comfortable with? What are your risk tolerances? What types of investments are out there? Do they meet my needs? So these are things that these are questions that only you can answer and you can only answer them to the best of your ability based on the information you have. And this goes back to our five areas of concern and you have to address every area of your life in these five areas. If you don't, they will still be addressed, but not as strategically and effectively as they could be because life will happen to you yeah. instead of at or by your command. And so that's why reading is important. But let's talk about specifically what reading can do for you as a skill builder. So first off, when you read great writing, it does many things to the brain. When you read, you remember everything. You can't unlearn something. Now, you can have a bonk on your head where you have a concussion or you're in an accident or maybe you have some sort of genetic illness that makes you forget. But your brain is materially altered by physically reading. Once you put information in there, the structure of your brain is different because now it's stored that information as data in the cells. It's electrico electrochemical impulses and it's in there. Yeah. So you can't unlearn it. You may forget it. Your immediate recall may be affected by whether or not you're under the influence of stress hormones like adrenaline, fight, freeze, or flee, or cortisol, anxiety, stress, fear that kind of comes around later, you know, um, that's kind of like, you know, uh, unrecognized fears. Um, so unless you're um, at perfect ease and calm, you may have recall problems. It doesn't mean that you didn't learn it and it doesn't mean it's not in there. You didn't forget it. It, it's in there. You just may not be able to recall it. So there's a difference between forget for not, forgetfulness and ability to recall. And that's a biological phenomenon. And that has to do with your current state of being, whether you're at peace or you're stressed in some way. Mm -hmm. but, you're, but it materially alters your brain. So that's the good thing. But And now once it materially alters your brain, it adds yet another, it widens your ability to analyze 
effectively. So now, by increasing your knowledge, it can also affect your logic because you have yet another comparison to make. What's so neat about the way the brain learns is when you're little, you know, you think of it as what they call tabula rasa, blank slate. So at that time, you're kind of like a digital audio video recorder. You don't have the ability to judge. Judgment comes later in the prefrontal cortex development. So when you're little, you just take everything in and maybe, you know, any emotion that you're experiencing might affect or color it in some way. But ideally, you're taking all of this data in and then it becomes the reference point. So when when uh, you look up in the sky um, and, and your parents say the sky is purple, and it, but it's really blue, you've learned it as purple, okay? And so that association will have to be questioned later on and refuted when you have the capacity to do so. But let's just say, for example, your, your um, parents taught you that the sky is blue, like it is, okay? And so as an adult, we don't learn that way where we take it for face value. Mom said the sky is blue, it must be blue. So like if I'm trying to teach you something, as an adult, you learn differently. So if I say to you, um, all right, so your genes are blue and, and, and so you're going to look for a blue reference. You don't take it for what it is. You have to find something to connect it to. So I will have to work to connect it. So I say your genes are blue, like your eyes are blue, like the sky is blue, like water in the ocean is blue. Until you make a blue association, you're not going to take that information in at face value. You don't know that genes are blue right. until you can associate it with something else so you know what blue means. So we associate when we get older. Um, that's, we learn by association. So the more you read and the more you increase your knowledge as an adult, the more we expand our ability to associate and make quicker connections with the brain. So it actually improves our efficiency from a brain perspective. Additionally, when you read something that you've read before, but you've heard, you're hearing it in a different context, it strengthens the knowledge of that particular subject. So the more you read about investing, the more connections you're going to make. So the more you hear the same thing over and over, now you're going to get validation. So it must be true, just like you associated to something else. So it's super powerful. <laughs> um, reading great writing elevates you in a couple of different ways. First, it gives you the ability to use grammar correctly. And you may not have learned grammar properly from reading it or learning how to communicate if you came from an area or somebody that was using English as a second language, grammar might not be great. But by reading great writing, again, because it goes in there, it gets stuck, it's in. Yeah. You know, So now you have more resources, you have bigger vocabulary. And what's great about reading, especially when you read experiential stuff, you know, I love spy novels, but you get to see how people interact together. By reading great writing and reading situational stuff, now, instead of having to live it through experience, you can draw on that resource and you can have a communication with somebody on another level because you know what a potential outcome may be. If you see a couple fighting in a book and you see it turned out poorly, you're like, well, I won't say that. But then you see how they overcame that. So now you can just jump to that conversation and you have an instant dialogue that you know has already ended successfully somewhere else. Uh -huh. So that's the beauty of writing, um, of reading great writing. It elevates you on so many levels. And so that's why when I wanted to sum this key or the whole series of keys up, and really round out the financial philosophy. It had to be about reading because, again, this is your foundation. I'm not saying I know everything about investing and this is it. No, this is just a foundation. Sure, we have master's series and we have a financial fluency series that comes after our keys to riches. You know, this is kind of our literacy series. Then there's fluency where we really get it in action. And then ours our master level where we learn how to take our investment to the next level. But as far as a fundamental basic program, this is it. And this is what you want to take to and and. Go to the next level with this week's key because become a voracious reader is how you get there. You have a foundation and you use it as your platform or your springboard. You can build any financial house on a solid financial foundation and this is it. So for this week's key statement, key action item and key affirmation, please visit our website at keystoriches.com. And for the Keys to Riches powered by Unlock Your Wealth Radio and the maestro of moolah, Michael Terry, I'm Heather Wagenhoff. Now go out and unlock your wealth today. UnlockYourWealthRadio.com is produced by Heather Wagonhalls and the Unlock Your Wealth Foundation. 
UnlockYourWealthRadio.com and its affiliates are copyrighted 2016 with all rights reserved. For more information on the Keys to Riches Financial Wellness Series, please visit our website at www.unlockyourwealth.com. 